Today we're installing Holly's 6.86 inch standalone Pro Dash onto our carbureted Bronco. That's right, carbureted. Why are we doing this? First and foremost, with Holly's Pro Dash up front and center on our steering column, we'll have access to our engine vitals at a glance. And with access to multiple screens, we'll be able to set up driving screens as well as off-road screens. We can choose between analog or digital style gauges, and with features like data acquisition and the ability to add more sensors, this Pro Dash is going to be right at home in our off-road rig. Lastly, if we decide down the road that we want to upgrade to one of Holly's EFI systems, such as a Sniper, Terminator X, or even a Dominator, it'll all plug and play. In this video, we'll go through sensor installation, the loose wire connections, firmware update, and finally the dash configuration. For our Bronco, we'll use a pair of pressure transducers for fuel and oil pressure readings and a temperature sensor for the water temp. Although not needed, a manifold air temperature sensor will also be installed. A few adapters will allow us to mount our fuel pressure sensor to our fuel line. A GPS antenna calculates speed, odometer, and trip functions, while an integrated G-meter monitors our acceleration and lateral forces. The 6.86 inch Pro Dash has 14 integrated LEDs that can be programmed for shift and warning lights. We'll also set up some virtual switches to turn on some of our accessories. Before we get started, let's go ahead and disconnect our battery. With 10 feet of harness, we definitely have enough length to wrap around our engine and back to the steering column. Let's go ahead and plumb it. Where you mount your dash will determine if you need an access hole for the harness. Since ours is on the steering column, we drilled a one inch hole. Now that we got our harness fed through the dash, I went ahead and pulled our uh, input output connectors off so we can slide it through our one inch hole. I also used a piece of Earl's fire guard to protect the harness from abrasion. Now that we got our harness through the firewall, it's time to install the sensors. There are various places you can mount your temperature sensor depending on your vehicle. With our wine intake, we've got plenty of provisions. We're going to mount it towards the front of the engine. Our Pro Dash kit includes a manifold air temperature lead. There's no need to install this on a carbed application, but we're going to go ahead and see what data it tells us when we're pushing the limits on our rig. For our oil temperature sensor, I simply replace the stock sensor. Make sure to use some PTFE on it. To mount our fuel pressure sensor, we picked up some Earl's AN adapters. The sensor has a 1 8 male MPT port, just like most carbureted fuel pressure gauges. So if you got one of these gauges on your vehicle, it'll be an easy swap. There's only a handful of loose wires we need to connect. A small red and black for battery power, a white 12 volt switched wire, the fuel level sender, and a TAC RPM wire, which we'll get from our MSD box. I went ahead and brought the small red and black wire through the firewall. We're gonna go ahead and connect those to these power distribution blocks we have installed. These are tied directly to the battery and is gonna keep our wiring nice and tidy. When terminating wires, make sure to use the proper tools and terminals appropriate for the wire gauge. We like using heat shrink terminals to protect from corrosion and the elements. The white wire needs to be connected to a switched 12 volt source. The ignition switch is the perfect place to tie into. As another option, you can find a 12 volt switch source on the fuse box by using a test light. Test this by cycling the ignition switch between off and run positions. It's important to note that this wire must have power while cranking your engine over. So make sure you're getting 12 volts while turning the engine over. Once you find a good 12 volt switch source you can use, Pick up a fuse tap from your local auto parts. They'll keep your installation wiring sanitary and make for a clean fused install. The light green wire is for our TAC RPM signal. We're going to splice right into our TAC output wire from the MSD. We're going to pull the terminal connected to the gauge and splice into our light green wire with the new connector. Now that we got our terminal installed, let's run the heat gun on the heat shrink to finish up. Now we can go back and install this back on our tachometer. The gray wire is our fuel level input, which is already pre-terminated at the Pro Dash connector. It's pre-configured for a 0 to 90 fuel level sending unit. We'll need to configure our Pro Dash for our Ford, which is 73 ohms full and 10 ohms empty. 
We'll just unplug the fuel sender wire from the switch and go directly to the gray wire. The light blue wire is a speed sensor input, which we're not going to use. It can be configured as a 5 to 12 volt square wave speed input. The last wires we need to connect are the input-output connectors. There's two bulkhead connectors, an 8-wire connector and a 10-wire connector. The 8-wire connector consists of four switched ground inputs and four 1.5-amp ground outputs. We're going to use two of those ground outputs to control our electric fan and auxiliary lights by creating some virtual switches in the ProDash. I'm currently using an MSD solid state relay block to control these accessories. So it's going to be an easy wiring job. I just got to funnel these two wires up to the relay. We'll put the rest of the wires away for future use. Then we'll configure the virtual switches when we get all the wiring finished. The 10 wire connector has some wires already pre-configured with some of the dash layouts. We'll be using three of these pre-configured wires, the high beam indicator and left and right turn indicators. We simply have to tie into the 12 volt wire that is active when these devices are on. High beam was easy. The left and right turn signals took some probing, but we found them. Simply tie into these wires and tuck the rest away for future use. Now that we got all our wiring done, it's time to mount our ProDash. I went ahead and took one of the aftermarket ProDash brackets and modified it to fit one of these T-bolt clamps. Now all that's left to do is install the main connector, our GPS antenna, and our USB port. We'll use some black electrical tape to cover up the unused USB port. We then mounted our ProDash onto the steering column, then plugged in the GPS cable and main harness connector. Now that we got all our sensors, wiring, and dash mounted, it's time to fire up the ProDash. But before you do that, make sure you update it with the latest firmware updates. Included with your ProDash kit is going to be a little thumb drive. You can use this to download the firmware from Holly's website. Let's go ahead and update our firmware. From your laptop or computer, go ahead and insert the thumb drive into a USB port. Then head on over to holly.com. We're going to click on the support tab and then on EFI software. Let's go ahead and scroll down to the Holly EFI digital dash section. The fourth line item is our firmware update, which is also the same for the 12.3 inch Pro Dash. Go ahead and click on it. It should automatically start to download. Once it's done, we're going to go to the file explorer, which is the icon that looks like a folder. It should be on your toolbar. Click on this icon and then let's go to our downloads folder. The file we're looking for is called Tech Library Pro Dash Firmware. If you don't see it, click on the Date Modified column. It should bring it up to the top. Go ahead and right click this file. We're going to click on Extract All. Hit the Extract button and make sure Show Extracted Files When Complete is checked off. Once it's done extracting, it'll show us a folder. We need to open this folder and find our bin file. This is our firmware update file. You should be able to see the thumb drive on the left hand side, typically the letter drive D. Ours is also called Kingston. We're going to click and drag our bin file onto the thumb drive. Once this is done, you can confirm that the file is in the thumb drive by clicking on it. Before we eject our thumb drive, take note of the number. In this case, 5.0.84, meaning this is version 5, build 84. We'll use this number to confirm our ProDash has updated. We can now right click and eject our thumb drive. Before we key on our ProDash, let's go ahead and slide in our thumb drive onto the USB extension cable. Upon boot up, the ProDash should automatically begin the firmware update. Make sure not to power off or interrupt the process. To confirm our update, click on the screen, then onto the menu button. Click on configuration, then click on about. On this screen, we can confirm our firmware update. If by chance the numbers do not reflect our firmware version, we can then update the firmware manually. Do this by clicking the second button on the bottom of the configuration screen. This will search our USB drive and update our firmware manually. Since we already updated on boot up, it's telling us no firmware is found. We have now successfully updated our firmware to the latest version. Now the first thing we want to do is make sure the ProDash is set for standalone operation since this ProDash will work with any of the Holly EFI systems. Go ahead and touch the screen and a menu should pop up to the right. Click on menu and then go to configuration. 
On this screen, we need to set the operating mode to standalone if it's not already set. We're going to go ahead and click on Reset the Default Layouts. This will configure all the layouts and channels for standalone operation. We'll get a warning, go ahead and select Yes. Now we can go back to the configuration and set up our clock and brightness settings. We also have the number of screen layouts we want to view. We'll leave it at the default setting for now. Let's go to Dash Configuration. All our sensors for standalone operation are pre-configured here. Let's go down the list and disable any sensors that we did not install. For example, IO3 is pre-configured for a map sensor. We did not install one so we can disable this channel. All our other sensors along with the high beam, left and right turn indicators are all pre-configured. Notice that our indicator lights have the switch to 12 volt option. As you can see, we have plenty of channels available for other sensors. Scrolling down, you can see that our SPD1 is our TAC RPM signal. We're not using SPD2, so we can disable it. Let's click OK and see what we have so far. Our ProDash comes pre-configured with nine layouts. Some of the layouts include presets for odometer, turn signals, and most of our basic sensors. You can modify and customize any one of these with any set of particular gauges, labels, or switches. And if you're handy with graphics software, you can create your own background. It'll give you that custom look that's just right for your vehicle. Keep an eye out for a future video where we show you how to upload a custom background and configure it with gauges, labels, and switches. Before we start, make sure you're on the dash layout you want to modify. We can then go ahead and click on the menu button. Then we're gonna click on the customize button. It'll give us a warning, go ahead and click OK. You'll know you're in the edit mode when you can see all the faint border lines to each sensor graphic. Since we're not using the boost channel, let's go ahead and remove or delete that gauge and replace it with a fuel level gauge. Go ahead and tap on boost gauge and hit delete. It'll ask you for confirmation, hit yes. Now let's add our fuel level gauge. Tap on the empty spot, select add, then gauge. This next window allows us to choose which sensor to monitor. As you can tell from this list, we can add just about anything to our layout. Let's scroll down and select fuel level. The next step is to choose what type of gauge we want to display. There's over nine styles to choose from. Here's what they look like. All of them can be customized. As firmware gets updated, so do the graphics, so be sure to keep an eye on firmware updates. We'll select digital to match our other gauges on our layout. Let's select a gauge and resize it up to match the other gauges. Let's scroll down to the size option and punch in 75. There we go, that looks about right. Hit OK and let's move it into position. There's a lot of options to play with here, so make sure to read the user manual for all the specifics. Now we're going to add some virtual switches to turn on our electric fan and auxiliary lights. To add a virtual switch, click on the screen and then hit the Add button. You'll have three options, Gauge, Label, and Switch. Click on the switch. The customized soft switch window opens. Here we can set up all the parameters to the switch. We have Label, Style, Colors, and Transparency options. To enable the switch, we need to select the channel our accessory is on. We assigned our fan to SSR1, which is the pink wire on the 8-pin I.O. connector. Let's go ahead and label our wire fan. Hit OK. Now that we can see our virtual switch, let's move it a little to the left. Tap on the switch and hit Move. Now let's add another switch on the other side. Click on an empty spot, tap Add, and then click on Switch. We set our auxiliary lights on SSR2, which is the brown wire. Let's go ahead and label the switch lights. Let's also reposition the switch. We'll move it a little over to the right. This layout is already pre-configured for our turn signals. You can see them up on the corners. Let's save our layout and test our configuration. Let's turn the fan on. Okay, good. Let's turn on our lights. Fantastic. Let's try our left turn signal. 
check. And our right, check. And finally, let's configure our fuel level. On our Ford, the fuel sender is 73 ohms empty and 10 ohms full. So let's dive into our dash configuration. Let's scroll down to fuel level. To the right side of the pull down menu is a little asterisk. Go ahead and click on it. On this screen is our calibration curve. It is currently set up with a 0 to 90 ohm calibration. We need to set 0% to 73 ohms and 100% to 10 ohms. To do that, double click on the 0 ohms table. Enter 73. Next, let's scroll down to the bottom. Let's change the 90 ohm to 10. Now let's click on Linearize X, which will then adjust and correct our graph. Hit save, but before we exit out to our dash, let's change the node in the dash configuration screen to reflect our change. Let's just note it 73-0 ohm Ford. Hit save and let's exit out to our dash. With our fuel level dialed in, we're ready to hit the trails. Now that our carbureted Bronco's got a standalone Pro Dash installed, we now got access to multiple screens, data acquisition, and all those features that those EFI guys got. Learn more about standalone Pro Dashes at holly.com.